in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Worship him from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God in the midst of his people. Mighty. We hail you. Most high. We hail.
politics and more power. Go ahead and speak the same power tonight. The exact same power, not an inferior one. The exact same power, resident upon his body. Same power. Same power. Forget about whatever sickness you came with. Talk to every depression. Talk to every voice that attempts to say the word of God over your life is a lie. Go ahead and preach to your destiny. Say, I'm coming for the same power. I may be slow, but I'm coming. I may not look like it. Now, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Saints of God pray, prophesy. The same power by the Holy Ghost. The same life. Same ability. Same strength. Same wisdom. Same energy. Same power. Same power. Same power. Hallelujah. people we may talk like the men in the system we may breathe in and out but we don't have the same life brothers and sisters there is a divine life Jesus transferred a divine life he said in John chapter 10 verse 10 he said the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but I am come not to give you a religion not to make you Christians I am come that ye may have life so we a quality of life that has not been known a life that is superior to this realm John chapter 3 verse 31 says he that cometh from above whoever possesses this divine life is practically literally above all hallelujah so tonight we're going to sing one more song crying that the Lord will open the gates and the doors of revelation. Without his spirit we are only noisemakers here. Hallelujah. It's only by his spirit. Hallelujah. Never forget in your life, in your ministry, in your business, in your endeavor, that outside of the spirit of God you have no existence. Hallelujah. Open up the gates. Open up the door. It's a very simple song. Open up the gates. Hallelujah. Just hold on. I want to teach you the song for those of you who don't know you hear the worshipers sing it once and then we'll follow hallelujah it's a very simple song prophetic song it says open up the gates the gates of revelation the gates of insight in the spirit open up the gates open up the door just hear the worshippers sing it once and then we'll join in concert. Open up the gate. Open up the gate. Open up the door. Open up the door. It's 
song. Simple song. Powerful song. Say. Contains deep revelation that cannot be exhausted in this realm. There are gates and doors where archives and mysteries of the spirit are hidden. confess that we are helpless without you. We declare our inability to help ourselves. Lord, we are confident that by your spirit you will communicate deep things into our hearts. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. Bless our hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Walk up to 10 people. Tell them it's good to see your face again. there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore hallelujah the Bible says and ye shall know the truth hallelujah and he said the truth that you know will make you it will make you free hallelujah and we thank God for his grace He's building us equipping us by the power of his spirit like my brother rightly said this is a training ground where God is building and equipping sons and daughters, those who will be the custodians of the next revival of the Spirit. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Appreciate the worshipers. Great people. Acts chapter 4, verse 16. Oh, let's start from verse 15 and when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves 16 saying what shall we do to this man it's a question for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who dwell in Jerusalem the last phrase and we cannot deny it. What shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle. A notable miracle. Had been done by them. And is manifest to all those who are in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. Look up. Tonight. God is going to be challenging us very briefly, hallelujah, on the need to stand out as beacons of light and begin to 
manifest the kingdom the life the power the glory the audacity and the grace that flows from the kingdom that we represent hallelujah hallelujah now this was an interesting story because it was an event that followed the healing of the man at the beautiful gate hallelujah when he was healed by peter and john it stirred up controversy in jerusalem and when he got into the temple the scribes and the pharisees suddenly saw the man he was sitting in an obvious position the bible tells us that he had a spot at the beautiful gate and every time people pass to pray they would drop arms hallelujah and at a certain time during the hour of prayer the bible says peter and john went to pray and seeing this man he was begging for arms and peter said look on us the bible says he looked at them steadfastly expecting to receive something and he said silver and gold have i not but such as i have give on to you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk hallelujah and then the bible says peter reached out and grabbed him and he leaping stood and he ran into the temple jumping and leaping and rejoicing and there was so much controversy and on account of this they had to hold a meeting hallelujah because the apostles were now becoming obvious threats to their environment hallelujah and the scribes and the pharisees felt threatened by the presence of certain people although they were not educated as it were they were not learned people hallelujah and they had to call them over to the jerusalem council the council of religious people isn't it amazing that when jesus walked upon the earth he never had problem with sinners and unbelievers his problem was with religious people hallelujah and when the saints the first fruit of the finished work of christ walked upon the earth they didn't have a problem with demons and devils hallelujah their major problem was among religious people it's amazing how religion can resist the things that the holy spirit is doing they were men and women full of human understanding but had no comprehension of the precepts of the spirit for you to be a scribe and a pharisee you had to know the five books of moses the torah the pentateuch you had to know it off heart and moses in that prophesied and says a prophet shall god send to you was prophetically speaking about jesus christ the messiah and when jesus walked upon the earth although they had that in their head they still persecuted him until they killed him that's why jesus speaking in john 6 verse 63 said the flesh profited nothing he said it's the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing he said the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and paul extending that statement said the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit he said for they are spiritually designed you don't use your five senses to understand the things of the spirit because it gets to a plane where every revelation you are encountering will wrestle every sense of logic that you have so you must be able to ascend the heel of the lord whether or not your mind understands that's why we call it faith hallelujah that our life and our walk in this realm is absolutely hinged on the integrity of the one we are following and not necessarily on our degree of comprehension and what he's doing hallelujah and so he said a notable miracle i'm going to speak very briefly on what i titled notable manifestation of sons notable manifestation of sons We've spoken a lot about the manifestation of sons. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Then verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. And the next verse says, For the whole creation was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by him who subjected the same in hope talking about adam the first man 
handing over the rightful keys of dominion to Satan. Hallelujah. And so the earth groans and travails, waiting for the manifestation of sins. I need you to understand that all through Bible history, the only way that men give glory to God is when the deeds of God is seen and expressed in the eyes of men. Are you listening to me? When no matter how supernatural a thing is, if it ends in the secret, God cannot be glorified. Are you listening to me? Because for God to be glorified, men must be the ones to give him glory. Are you following me? And therefore, they must see and understand the goodness and the deeds of God. And then as a response to what they see, they will give him glory and give him praise. And so when I talk about notable, the word notable connotes being obvious, being significant, being outstanding, worthy of note. The Bible makes us to understand in Acts chapter 4 verse 16. The apostles had been doing um, great things while Jesus was around. The Bible records that when he sent the 70, hallelujah, that they went and came back and said, even the demons are subject to us through thy name. So it was not exactly their first time of experiencing the manifestation of the power of God. However, the Bible says this was a different one. And what made it different? It wasn't because the miracle was new. It was because it was notable. Say after me, notable. It was notable. Done before everyone. Undeniable. Irrefutable. Beyond argument. Hallelujah. A notable miracle. And when the scribes and the Pharisees gathered themselves together, because they said, through which name did you cast this out? And Peter began to preach a sermon, and they brought themselves together. They said, brothers and sisters, oh, well, no sisters, they're brothers. Praise God for ladies. How come there were no ladies when they were conspiring to do all these bad things? Ladies, that should be a thumbs up. So, are we agreeing that men are the cause of come on remember Eve <laughs> hallelujah remember Jezebel remember the mystery Babylon was not a man was a woman upon the horse can I continue okay remember the mother of Jesus <laughs> hallelujah Okay, that aside, let's continue. The Bible says that a notable miracle, although they, they didn't believe God, they didn't love the things of God, there was no human way they would prove that this was not so. Hallelujah. Notable manifestations of songs. The Bible makes us to understand that special miracles he called them special miracles. They were not regular miracles. Special miracles were wrought through the hands of Paul such that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought together. The Bible says just leaving his body, devils, demons were casted out. Special miracles. The manifestation of songs will not create the kind of ripple effect that the kingdom desires until everything about our lives become notable the secret of expressing glory to God through our life is that everything about our lives will be reckoned to be notable the Bible tells us that many men live long however there was a man that caught the attention in the Bible hallelujah what was his name, Bible students? Sorry? Some people are saying, Mel, Mel what? Hallelujah. Who is the oldest man in the Bible? Come on. How old? Expo. Praise God. Now, several people lived long. 
But how come we don't preach about the other people that live long? Something was notable about the longevity of Methuselah. The Bible tells us that there were many wise men. I mean the spirit of wisdom and creativity in Exodus 31 rested upon Bezalel. But the Bible tells us that there was something notable about the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable that Queen Sheba had to come from the east to reckon with the fact that there was something notable about this man. And the Bible says when she came and saw the splendor of the palace and the manifestation of the artistry, the creativity and the wisdom of the spirit, the Bible testifies that there was no more breath in her. And she said, half of this was not told me. Notable manifestations of songs. Hallelujah. Notable. There were many men who were men of faith in the Bible. How come every time we talk about an icon of faith, we suddenly move to the father Abraham? Notable manifestations. The Bible says that a notable miracle happened. And as a result, because it was notable, if it was just a miracle, they would try to deny it. But they said a notable miracle. Everybody saw this man crippled and then one moment they saw him standing they couldn't deny it they couldn't say it was stage managed for he had been there a long time the notable manifestation of the sons will begin to silence the systems of the world you know why god is allowing them to see all the evil and chaos because when the sons manifest it will be notable traceable impact that they can see and know that at a time T, there was darkness and chaos. Why do you think the Bible tells us that there was darkness and then God said, let there be light? That, that statement would have been skipped away. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. It would still make sense. Why did God have to contrast the darkness, the chaos, and the light? It's God's desire that we not only manifest as sons of light but enter a realm called notable manifestation undeniable manifestation unarguable manifestation of sons hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth the scribes and the pharisees had been teaching you must understand they were learned people humanly speaking they were absolutely intelligent but for the first time they had a man preach and his context and expression was notable and the people took note they said who is this from whence comes this man who is this notable grace and the bible says he taught as one with authority and not as the scribes. There was something notable in his life. When he began to move, there was something about his love. It was notable. Hallelujah. And when he climbed upon the mountain, the Bible says about 5,000 people, aside women and children, followed him. Why? Because his manifestation was notable. I needed to understand that John had manifestations. Hallelujah. But there was something notable. Say after me, notable. Obvious. Something conspicuous. Something um, undeniable. And the unbelievers testified. They said, we cannot deny it. We cannot deny it. This is too notable. There's no way we are going to try to cook up a story to stop God from receiving glory. It's notable. God intends that your life becomes a notable sign and a notable wonder such that no matter what angle people come, they'll say this life is too notable. We cannot but deny the hand of God 
we cannot but deny the favor of God. There were many people who worked in the ministry of helps and hospitality. But the Bible tells us there was a woman called Dorcas. Notable. Hallelujah. To the point that when Dorcas died, all the women were making reference. They said, no, she had done see. It wasn't just ordinary. The way other people were doing. She was a giver. Notable. Until we begin to move in notable realms of manifestations. The world will find intelligent human ways. The Bible makes us understand that when Jesus died. They put certain people. The military people to protect him. Hallelujah. And if they suddenly came and saw the grave empty. They would argue it. And so God needed to do something notable the bible says on that resurrection morning i mean jesus had the ability to walk through and they would not see him at least peter did it peter walked out of the prison jesus would have kindly gone out of the grave but if he, if jesus just went out of the grave people will still argue it are you listening to me it had to be notable the moment a thing is notable it cannot be denied notable Hallelujah. Notable. I cannot look at this guy and say he's a lady. No matter what scientific evidences I bring, this guy is a man because it is what? Notable. There are notable features that attest to the fact that this is a man. I cannot see this and call it, assuming this is not a Bible and call it a living thing this is a book hallelujah this cannot be a human being no matter what biological experiment i do i cannot prove that this is a human being now listen we live in a world where almost everything can be proven with science hallelujah people are trying to prove whether walking on the red sea was genuine and their scientists and physicists are trying to conjure certain things the world is trying to disprove the fact that Jesus is Lord hallelujah and right now there's the argument over transformation in lives and whether or not people are really healed when someone says he's healed they say just forget don't tell us that lie the end of all argument is a notable manifestation a notable manifestation hallelujah if the people had never seen the man at the gate beautiful they would conjure theories hallelujah and said the apostles went and cooked this up but everyone saw him they knew him they knew his parents are you following me his parents were known and then when this man got up it was a notable manifestation although they tried to argue they couldn't do much why because it was undeniable when you move in the realm of notable manifestations even satan will stop arguing about the fact that jesus is lord over your life satan gave a testimony about job hallelujah one of the few if not the only places in scripture where satan gave a testimony about a man satan gave a testimony that he could not break through the hedge of protection that was around you notable testimony then the bible says you are a city said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be what a notable city you cannot be hidden. He said, let your light so shine. I want it to be noticed. I want it to be notable. Because when men see it, and you let them know that I'm the author, then I will be glorified. That's why there are few cases in the Bible where Jesus healed the sick and did supernatural things in the hidden. There are few times, did you know, ironically, 
right now we have more miracles in the church than outside the church but do you know when you study scripture there were more miracles outside than in the church hallelujah notable manifestations of songs the bible makes us understand that creation is waiting for the sons to begin to do undeniable things there are certain people that when you talk about them in the world system people can argue and say forget is this guy a real man of god just forget what they are doing however there are certain people that have stepped into a realm called notable manifestations that unbelievers believers alike no one understand that there is the hand of god upon their life we celebrate many evangelists in the world. However, there is a man called Evangelist Billy Graham. Notable Kabo Satabaya. There was something about his life. Hallelujah. And as a result, whether the president of America is a Freemason or not, he would come to pay homage to this man called Billy Graham. There are many evangelists that have blessed the nations and especially Nigeria but we have one called evangelist Reinhard Bonke his name is almost like coca-cola when you call the name people say ah, I know Reinhard Bonke no table manifestations there's no denomination it doesn't matter what they believe or what they don't believe that will resist the presence of Reinhard Bonke no table manifestations hallelujah are you getting blessed it's not enough to begin to manifest the life the kingdom the power but we must step into a realm of undeniable manifestations that when you're exhibiting the character of the spirit it must be notable notable if you are a giver that you step into the realm of notable giving notable giving that your name will be synonymous every time I call your name what is notable about your life hallelujah bin Laden did a notable manifestation although he was evil but it was a notable manifestation you will never read the history of terrorism without mentioning his name he earned himself that title notable manifestation hallelujah a woman in church history called mother Teresa how many of you have read about her was she the only woman who loved people don't you love people but there was something notable are you listening to me no table no table about her life there were many apostles isn't it interesting how the Bible did not give detailed account of all of them I wonder why because on the day of Pentecost the Bible never said Peter received the Holy Ghost two days before the rest how come some people did not make it the archives of their lives I mean the Bible dedicated two thirds of his writing in the New Testament to just one man I think that's not fair enough room would have been given one one chapter for everybody to encourage diversity how be it there was a notable manifestation of an apostle hallelujah and tonight I've come to tell us that the world will stop denying the hand of God upon our lives when we step into no 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 when we before you say amen let me finish it when this is the condition when we step into that dimension of the notable manifestation of souls hallelujah there is no man by the grace of God Almighty who will pass around here 
and deny the fact that kings and priests there is a gathering of eagles to the glory of God there's no man who will deny that Jesus is Lord in this place it's to the glory of God I say it with all humility that every time you step there is something notable we must get to that dimension where there is something notable in our lives are you listening to me notable that your love life will become notable that every time they want to give an example of one who passionately loves the kingdom hallelujah they'll say Aaron do you know Aaron is an example notable if it is not notable then you will never be able to make impact and bring glory to the father hear me herein is our father glorified when we bear much fruit hallelujah herein is our father glorified that when you become a notable mother such that it's not just your children who will attest to the fact that there's something about your life did you know that there are some families that the children prefer their neighbor's mother to be their mother or their neighbor's father because there's something notable there are some families that whenever you are free you want to go and relax there notable the life and the hand of God is notable there are certain people you want to be with the moment you have any spare time no matter how it inconveniences you you want to be around them there is something notable about their lives the question the Lord is asking tonight is what is notable about your life what is notable for the kingdom many of us have a little of power here a little of passion for God here a little of zeal a little of grace a little of um, the giving life a little a little but this Bible I need you to know that there were many people who were featured in this Bible but some were featured once and for all others were featured repeatedly in the Old Testament and they were featured in the part two of the Bible they couldn't be denied Abraham Elijah sorry and Enoch Elijah and who Moses I'm sorry they had finished their course in the Old Testament what brought them to the transfiguration again no table manifestations such that God used Moses to typify the law and he used Elijah to typify the prophets when God was showing me dimensions of his call upon my life one time I had a vision and God used two notable men of God to reveal to me the patterns that I would walk in and for years it bothered me I said Lord why did you use these people how many of you have had dreams where God used someone's face to teach you something when God is talking about love then you see why was it not your face Hallelujah. No table manifestations of songs. The Lord wants us to step into that dimension where we begin to move in no table dimensions of the miraculous, no table dimensions. I cried and I prayed. I told God yesterday, you know, while I was just praying in the night expressing my heart to the Lord and I told him I said Lord take me to that dimension of notable a notable life where everything about my life becomes an object of conversation to the glory of the Lord hallelujah that people look and say why why does he talk this way why is it that um, every time he speaks there seems to be something notable. There are many people that sing on stage. I, I always say it. Can sing on stage and raise a song. 
and as you are going back your song dies with you there the people who are clapping cannot even remember what you sang hallelujah and then someone else will come on stage and sing the exact same song and that song will linger in your spirit for days and weeks every time the holy spirit wants you to worship that's the song even if you don't know everything about the song it could be a phrase it will remain in your spirit and every time you sing you see the face of the one who sang notable there are certain meetings that when you enter you get blessed and you go out but there are certain meetings when you enter you see that the presence of God in that atmosphere is notable notable hallelujah that when you sit there is the consciousness that the glory of God is in this place there is the consciousness that God in the midst of his people is mighty how many of you have taken an unbeliever for a program and this is someone that is a noise maker and will not be patient and he says, I'll sit down for five minutes and he sits down and after ten minutes you see a sense of reverence and a contemplation within his an intrapersonal contemplation something notable is happening to him hallelujah the Bible makes us understand that on the day of Pentecost something notable happened that was not the first time they were celebrating Pentecost are you following me now 50 days after the ascension of Jesus something notable happened and it attracted everyone to come and the Bible says that they saw men filled with the Holy Ghost and were speaking and when Peter spoke there was something notable about his speech and as a result 3,000 people 3,000 people came to the Lord hear me it's time for everything about our lives to become notable are you listening to me it's time for what everything about our lives to become notable that every time you stand and you minister the word there is something notable an identity that validates that Christ is at work in your life come Steve please play this guitar notable there are many people that play the guitar there are many people that play all of these instruments what is it about the man we call Steve Strings it's not because he sings unusual songs necessarily go ahead and play Steve notable there is something I know a lot of people professional people that play guitar but there is something notable hallelujah and every time you hear him whether you like what he's playing or not you cannot deny that this comes from a realm that is not of the earth there are certain people that when they speak their wisdom is notable the Bible calls certain people wise men from the East there were many men from the East but their wisdom was notable hallelujah there's got to be something notable about your life for the kingdom hallelujah tonight we are going to rise above that average and that ordinary life we are going to rise above that limitation of nominal christianity it's time for your christianity to be notable not just notable in church it's time for people to begin to argue and discuss about your passion for god it's time for people to begin to discuss the grace of God upon your life the workings of the spirit that every time they are talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit they tell them can you see how 
I covet Shei's dimension of intimacy. There's something notable about her intimacy. I've had the opportunity of counseling and talking with a number of people about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And there are about three or four of them that have attained a realm I call notable intimacy. Hallelujah. That at the end of speaking with them, I had to go back to God and cry and say, God, what, what, what did these people do that brought you into that depth of intimacy? Hallelujah. A notable life. That every time people see you, your life becomes a motivation because there is something notable. Every time they are talking about an example of a true servant of God, can your name be called for notable kingdom stewardship? Every time they are talking about men and women who demonstrate um, what it means to be prosperous and yet godly can your name come in the midst of that notable discussion acts chapter 4 verse 16 it says a notable miracle has been performed and we cannot deny it i look forward to the time when in and through my life we will keep our generation stand still and say, do you have any other argument as to why you think Jesus will not be Lord on this earth? Where we will dismiss all the facts and figures and all the things that people use to deny the fact that Jesus is Lord. I look forward to a time when a sorcerer and a diviner is doing whatever he has to do and then you step into that place unknowingly and the jazz stops walking notable carbo satire without speaking in tongues and making noise let me tell you the world is tired of our noise what they need is the notable manifestation of sons and so we can preach and sweat on stage and they cross their legs but the moment they see something notable, they will arise and say, what is this? Notable. For as long as you love, like unbelievers love, Christ cannot be glorified because it doesn't make any difference. When your love becomes notable, then it will compel men to know that there is an ability at work in you that is not human. For as long as your wisdom is regular and natural. I look forward to a time when the government will run to the church and say we, we are confused. We don't know where to go politically, economically. And the church will say, oh yes, we know. Let it be as it were in the days of Daniel. That when there was confusion and chaos in Babylon, because the king forgot his dream, and the king forgot he didn't even know the interpretation all the sorcerers and diviners failed and the bible says that there was need for a man who had the spirit of god in a notable fashion and daniel stepped out the king said i will kill all of you and daniel said there's, there's no cause for alarm just give me one night i will bring a notable result and he got up in the morning and says oh king let me tell you your dream and he began to astonish him and he said i testify that the spirit of the gods i testify the spirit of the gods is upon him the bible says when they were tested he was found 10 times better 10 times better it was a testimony that the hand of God was upon his life. The Bible talks about a man called Job. He said Job was the greatest man in the East. 
They were prosperous people. The East was known for prosperity and wisdom. How be it? It was notable. We must begin to make notable impact. Notable impact in our community. When the church builds a borehole in a community and builds a school, let me tell you something. The government will have no option but to involve the church in the decision making of that environment. The reason why we pray in tongues and shout and the world is not moved by our tongues and our revelation is because it is not yet notable. Hallelujah. That every time you go to greet your auntie or your uncle, they receive you with such warm reception because they have marked it that every time you greet them, a door is open. So there's something notable about your life. The moment you say, I am coming, they get very excited. Do you know that there are some people you long for them to visit you? There are some people you long for them to come and say hello because there is something notable about their lives. We are going to be raising a cry. I cried out my life yesterday. I said, Lord, a notable life. My generation must know that a son, an ambassador of the kingdom, has stepped his feet upon this environment for the glory of the king for the glory of the king notable that your excellence becomes notable that your wisdom becomes notable that your life becomes notable that the grace of god upon your life becomes undeniable such that although you are not the firstborn in the family they will never make a decision without inquiring of you somehow they know that your impute is relevant not just because you are prosperous but because the hand the spirit of the Lord is upon you hallelujah that in your department and in your faculty they will note you for certain things when it comes to the affairs of wisdom they know that the wisdom of God resides upon a citizen when the king of Syria sent Naaman with a letter and the king of Israel was was disturbed Elisha now Elisha said oh king why are you worried he said send the man to me and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel send him let him know that God has ambassadors who are still alive and are still doing well. I look forward to the time when things are not going on in your room and your house and you step in and say, Lord, prove that an ambassador lives in this room. Prove that an ambassador lives in this place. Where your life and every activity around your life becomes notable. When they make you a faculty president or a departmental president or a pastor or a minister that there will be something about your dispensation that will enter the archives of history. That when so 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 and so 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 person was here there was something notable. How many of us desire that kind of life? If you truly want to bring glory to the king then you must desire the notable manifestations of some. Notable. Let me give you a testimony to the glory of God. Some years ago, they brought a lady from Congo who had some demonic things around her life. Very, very terrible. Hallelujah. And when that lady came, she was supposed to come and see me. I used to sit down near the Sunday school building. And I just sat there, I was just meditating. And as soon as this lady stepped close, she wouldn't move further again and the people said let's go they said i'm not going and then at a point 
they forced her and the moment she stepped in just where i was seated she just started shouting she said god is in this place god is in this place god is in this place and that's how she fell under the power of god and i tell you the truth instantly i sat down i was sitting there and i said satan go notable manifestation of songs there are many of us that need to look at our parents and say i speak to you enough is enough notable and suddenly things begin to change around their lives and they look at you and say what is it about your life and then you let them know that he is lord and i live to bring him glory until your life is notable the king cannot be glorified through your life are you listening to me there's got to be something notable whenever people are in trouble that they can run to you because you have been noted for certain things whenever people need solutions they can run to you because you have been notable the bible says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the lord will be exalted to a notable point and he said all nations shall flow to it because it will become a house of prayer it will become a house of solutions it will become a house of breakthrough a house of increase and that's what god is doing by his spirit in koinonia making this house a notable place notable for signs and wonders notable for impact and transformation notable for the manifestation of the law of the character of the spirit notable for the grace and the hand of god notable for raising giants and champions and great men notable for communicating the mind and the counsel of the spirit for every season and I call you tonight to join in this quest of having a notable life. Enough of the ordinary life. Enough of the life that people can argue and argue about and say we are not even sure whether he loves God or not. Let me tell you, when people are arguing whether or not you are a Christian, your life is not yet notable. Hallelujah. When people look and say, Femi, sorry, we are arguing. Are you really filled with the Holy Ghost? Just settle this for us. Don't answer that question. Go back and lock yourself and say, Lord, my life must be notable. There are many people who try to replace this notable grace by wearing suits and speaking good English. None of this will cover for the notable hand of God for your life. I mustn't wear nice suit and speak with color and say, okay, I'm here, bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, I can bless your life. Invite me to preach well in your church. The hand of God upon your life ought to be undeniable. Are you listening to me? The Bible says when Jesus was born, there was a notable star. There were many stars, but there was one notable star. And the Bible says on account of that star, people began to flood into that place because a star was lifted and it was directly above that house. That the Lord will make your life like a star. That people will flood and come and say, what is it about the grace of God upon your life? What is it about the hand of God? What wisdom is this? What knowledge is this? Hear me, if you don't convert this thing that I'm preaching, you will live an ordinary life and you will end up being frustrated. The secret of impact that will bring glory to God, especially in this generation of westernization and controversy, there are so many options. We need a notable manifestation of sons. A notable manifestation of sons. That when we are talking about givers, the world will not dare say that they are on the top of the list in showing welfare and hospitality. That the church will arise whenever there is disaster before the government finish their meeting. 
we have sons of the kingdom who are empowered to step in and help the nations the notable hand of God upon our lives we look forward to times when when doctors conclude about people the church is already working in that dimension right now there are several sicknesses that even the hospital cannot diagnose and they tell them look I don't know what to tell you try God that's the only thing I know just try it's my desire that every one of us step into this notable lifestyle a notable lifestyle noted by believers and by unbelievers That the community in Zaria, the community in Ebiu, the community in Kaduna State, the community in Nigeria will know that he reigns through your life. You know, every time we sing that song, Lord, you reign forever. When we get to the place that says, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. One night I was singing that song. And when I finished singing, suddenly my spirit, I heard a voice saying, you reign. So I twisted the song a little. Then when I sing you reign, after a while I switch it. I say, I reign, I reign, I reign, cause you reign, I reign. I reign, I reign, cause you reign. The scripture that John Fah shared, he said the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty and begins, they are not the congregation of the small. God calls you mighty. It's a meeting of mighty men. And God is saying, mighty men, how come you have not delivered the poor and oppressed? Why are things going on as though you are not alive Archbishop Benson Idahosa a man who lived a notable lifestyle during the popular Benin witch festival you will never talk about the history of revival in Nigeria without talking about the Benin witch festival and the impact of Archbishop Benson Idahosa all the witches were going to come from the world and gather in Benin for a conference. And be, it also said, not when I'm alive, not when I'm in Benin, it will not hold. No table audacity. And the media challenged him. He said it will not hold. And a few days or about a day to the meeting, they had to call a press conference. Of the chief of the witches this is recorded on video the chief of the witches and Archbishop Benson Idahosa and they sat down and the media people interviewed them they said all kinds of things and when the presenter was about rounding up Idahosa said wait don't round up I have something to say and he turned and looked at the man and said before the whole country answer now are you a witch be careful as you give this answer because you may fall down and die now are you a witch answer the country and the man kept quiet for a while this was a king of the witches here in nigeria from india asia all over and idahosa said i'm listening guess what the man said no, it also said you can close the program. An ambassador, alive and active. What a notable life. He was told that at a point he was traveling and armed, rob armed robbers blocked them. Hey, come out, lie down. And he told, he was surprised. The driver was afraid. He, told, he, he said, park. He told the driver, park. And he came out and dressed his clothes and the young brothers were lie down and he looked at them he said three things must happen to you now you are going to choose 
either to be paralyzed, to die, or to be blind. But what must happen to you right now? Now listen, I'm not just saying this. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. What kind of life is that? Hallelujah. It was said of Bishop Oedeko that armed robbers came and kidnapped his daughter. And they were running out. And he said, if I am a servant of God, they will not cross my gate. As soon as they got to the gate, something happened. They started arguing with one another. And they brought back the child. Do you believe this? Let me share with you a testimony to the glory of God. I've shared the testimony. We're lying down peacefully in our house. When a thief came and entered. And when he entered, he went to uh, the table where we keep our laptops. And he carried my laptop. And when he carried it, before, you know, my brothers got up, you know, tried to pursue the guy. The guy ran, opened the door, and ran away. And it was in the middle of that chaos I woke up. And I said, what's happening? And he said, the thief had gone away with my laptop. And I looked. And there was no laptop. And I got up. I said, well, Lord, two things will happen. The laptop will come back or you give me money to buy a new one. In any case, you are Lord. Hallelujah. And then suddenly I saw a vision of an angel. And he just did this with his hands. And I didn't say anything. Hear me, friends. God is my witness. They are here to testify. Seven hours later, that laptop was back on the table. We didn't raise any alarm. The people in, this, in, the, in our neighborhood took it upon themselves. And they pursued that armed robber and went to his house. He hid it under the carpet in their house. They brought it out. This was the case. I was counseling people in school. When they called me and said, please come. They had to go and bring his brother in um, where, um, the military cantonment. What do we call it? Basawa. And he came wanting to come and just plead with me. And the guy packed his things and ran out of Zaria. A time will come when somebody wants to harm you, he will reconsider. And say, is he worth it? Is, the, is he worth it? The word of God says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. When you begin to say, ah, witches are disturbing me. Devils are this and that. Will you press into God to a notable dimension where the demons and devils will reconsider and say, is he worth it? Or are we trying to frustrate ourselves for nothing? That you become so excellent and blameless that your, that your lecturer will have no basis of implicating you. The Bible says they looked for an occasion to implicate Daniel and they didn't find anyone. Rise up on your feet. It's a communion service, so we'll have to pray so that we'll quickly take the communion. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Notable manifestations of sons. Go ahead and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and bless his name and say, Lord, no table manifestations, no table from today by the hand of God. The grace of God upon my life is no table, no table, no table. No table. The wisdom of God upon my life is becoming notable. Go ahead and pray. Bakaya. My world life is notable. My understanding, my insight to the world is notable. Your prosperity upon my life is notable. The goodness of God upon my life becoming notable. Over the walls of my hands, notable. Go ahead and pray. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your life. Pray for your fellowship. Pray for your business. For your group. Notable. 
When our lives become notable, then the world will reckon with the fact that God is at work in our lives. When our lives, when our passion for God, when our zeal for His house, when our giving, when our the manifestations of His grace, His power, His wisdom, when it becomes obvious, undeniable, then there will be no argument again. It's foolish to argue with notable results. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now tonight is a communion service and we're going to be taking the communion. Now, I want you to take the communion with understanding and revelation. And I'll be reading two scriptures very quickly. John. John chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, I'd like you to cherish what God is doing in our midst. He's truly making us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. Verse 35, John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Hallelujah. Verse 53, just jump quickly to verse 53. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, Ye have what? No life in you. It's not talking about the biological life. The manifestation of the divine life that will make you notable. Notable. 
He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth with me. And I in him. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying for every time you partake of the communion. You reenact, you reenact the revelation of your oneness. Are you listening to me? Every time you take the communion, you realize that you is in the realm of the spirit. There is a renewal of the fact that you are one with Christ and that you are a possessor of the God life. A life that is beyond sickness. A life that is beyond failure. A life that is beyond weakness. Are you listening to me? The divine life above and beyond the limitations of the flesh. Very quickly, let me show you something in 2 Corinthians. I understand for many of you who have observed, you will notice that there has been an escalation of the death of fathers. How many of you have taken note of that? People's fathers just dying and the rate at which people are falling ill and falling sick but the bible says there is a bomb in gilead i want to show you a spiritual mystery tonight turn with me sorry first corinthians first corinthians 11 how that the communion is a spiritual principle that is an antidote to sickness, an antidote to weakness, and an antidote to the plague of death. Hallelujah. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat this is did he say this is bread he said this is my body which is broken for you broken for your sickness broken for your weakness broken for your limitation are you following me now he said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also the cup and when he had supped, saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood this do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah follow me to verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 for this cause stop for nothing the communion with the understanding and the revelation of what it is empowered to do there are three things that happen for this cause many are number one weak many are number two sick and many sleep so when the communion is taken with understanding and revelation it gives you supernatural strength as ordinary as this looks Humanly, this is just bread and cake or, or drink or whatever. But that there is a revelation in the spirit. That this is what the Bible calls the bomb in Gilead. That when there is a plague, a plague of weakness, a plague of sickness, the midst of the Lord's body, that his body was broken in exchange for your strength, in exchange for your weakness, in exchange. So taking that reenacts in the realm of the spirit the blessing of strength the blessing of health the blessing of longevity are you following me now and so we are taking this communion tonight with the understanding that there will be a supernatural impartation of strength spiritual strength mental strength and physical strength and we are taking this that by the revelation 
of Jesus Christ, his body broken for us, that no sickness, listen to me, no devil, no demon will survive your body as you take of this communion. And lastly, that with this communion, we end the plague of death over our lives and our families. Listen, you need to believe this. There is many people suffer because we do not understand the principles that God has put to address certain issues. There's no point arguing over what God has said. The mystery of the communion. Hallelujah. The worshipers will lead us. We'll quickly do this as we share. Please, if you don't get, just be patient. I hope the cups go round. I invite the ministers, please, as many just come. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, twelve. We need at least twelve people, please. Hallelujah. At least twelve people. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Over this communion, this is ordinary drink and bread. But we declare that the impartation of the Holy Ghost comes upon it. In the name of Jesus, that as we take this communion tonight, it becomes a supernatural antidote against weakness. We banish weakness, even that by the mystery of the Holy Communion. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we banish sickness from our camp. We banish sickness from the body. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, every covenant of death upon everyone's life and over our families, as we take the communion, an end comes to it. Let the plague stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, we bless this communion and we call it anointed in the name of Jesus. Servants of God, you can just pick it and walk around. We may have some station. Some people should service those outside. Please do that quickly. Don't take it yet. Just take the cup and the bread. Hallelujah. Please, let's have more people. Yeah, Pastor, you can have this. Let's have some people go outside. Please do it. Make it snappy. Just make sure you have the, the bread and the cup and begin to pray prayerfully. Yes, Pastor Show. Believe in what is happening in this place. Please let's make it snappy. Just pick the cup and the bread. That's what we
please let's do it very quickly very quickly let the ministers help out just ensure you have the bread and the cup inside outside hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to pray and express your heart what you're trusting that the lord caused this to do in your life this is not just a religious ritual in one minute I like this communion to make sense to you. Please, the welfare, let's have more. Looks like there are still people more. As many who have, even if you don't have, you can get the bread. Let's, let's save time. If you've not gotten the cup, please just lift hands. All right, please locate them and let everyone have it. There's more of the cup here. Taking the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have not gotten the cup or the bread? Hallelujah. Please, can we make this snappy? Let's do it really fast. Just keep your hands lifted. Please locate them and, and the ministers turn so that you can. The Bible says that Jesus said if you eat. Please, um, Shade, there are people here. Is it the cup or the, the bread? Okay. Please, the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Pass it round very quickly. Father, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is a sacred spiritual exercise. We are taking this to end the plague of death, to end the plague of weakness, to end the plague of sickness. He said we should do this in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now together we are going to take the bread and the cup. Even, even if you've taken it and you've not gotten it, um, you can take that later on. Who has the bread? I see that they are not. Okay, please. has one there please I need everybody to have it let's do it quickly tumors will die growth will go demonic oppressions will leave of death will end who has the bread I'm not sure the ministers have the bread please Let me have the remaining so you can pick one for yourselves. That's all right. Just okay, here's the bread. Do we have any who doesn't have? Okay. 
everybody you've taken your own hallelujah praise the Lord now look up please this is ordinary bread hallelujah and this is ordinary wine or juice or zobo or whatever it is how be it I need you in one moment to cease looking at this as just bread and a cup there is a spiritual mystery are you listening to me Jesus said if you eat this is my flesh and if you take this is my blood that for every time you do this you enact a mystery an inexplainable mystery in the realm of the spirit that dispels weakness dispels sickness and dispels death and after tonight's communion we will say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your strength enough of dying around it's happening all over the country enough of sickness and weakness lord we believe father anoint this even as we take it we bless it in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit together now let's take it go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit please pass the cups round go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit Say the mystery of the body and the cup. Leba kaparada baseketeba. Go ahead and challenge weakness, challenge sickness, challenge death. In the name of Jesus, we are obedient to the ordinances of God. Challenge every unfaithfulness over your life over your family members no more death no more loss no more weakness every pain challenge it in the name of Jesus for when our obedience is complete God is committed to perform when your obedience is complete cancers die in the name of Jesus tumors die in the name of Jesus fibers be gone demonic compression be gone every mental problem by the power of the communion oh death where is thy sting we banish the hand of death the plague of death. We receive strength, strength, energy, vitality, longevity. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff. Thou preparest a table for us. In the presence of our enemies, you are not our heads in oil and our cup overflow. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Health, wealth, longevity, longevity. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but leave to declare. Go ahead and declare. I refuse it. So kataba. Don't take it for granted. Don't take what you are doing for granted. We are operating under instruction. Don't take it for granted. We refuse to mourn any dead. Let the plague of death 
take us far from the camp. For there are ambassadors. The plague of death, the plague of accidents, the plague of robbery, the plague of war. We decree it. We are preserved. According to John 5, in Sunday, we are preserved. Preserved from the spotted dogs of men. Because on our both, we understand the principles by which our kingdom operates. And we enact that principle. Let it be registered in the realm of the spirit more than conquerors. We live long. We live strong. We live happy. We live healthy, graceful, favor, peaceful, making impact. We fear no evil. We are immune against robbers, immune against wicked men, immune against sickness, immune against demonic oppression. There's freedom by the power and the revelation. For when our obedience is complete, then God watches over his work to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a practice that you can go on with. Don't idolize it. That's the trouble with people. When we begin to do things like this, we idolize it. It must be administered within the context of the world. Lord, we thank you for tonight's meeting. We'll be noted the goodness of God upon our lives will be notable. The hand of God upon our lives will be notable. The favor of God upon our lives will be notable. The character of the Spirit upon our lives will be notable. Our impact and increase, the undeniable results will be notable. In the name of Jesus. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time worshiping with us very quickly. We are out of time. I'd like you to leave your seat and walk up quickly. Inside, in the overflow, outside, appreciate them. If this is your first time, please, I'd like you to come out. Just walk up. We love you. We respect you. Please appreciate them. Do it very, very quickly. We are out of time. Hallelujah. I'd like you to jump up like a general and come very quickly. We are the light of the world. A city, wow, appreciate them. Come on, give them a big, big koinonia welcome. Inside, outside. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have every one of you. Can we appreciate them? Give them a big, big koinonia. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's our joy and pleasure to have you worship with us. This is koinonia. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. Bringing us into points of intimacy with his spirit and equipping us to make great impact for the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so I welcome every one of you. Thank you so much for making our time. We love you. We respect you. Very quickly, we want to pray and prophesy. I need you to understand that every one of us here is anointed, full of God's spirit. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. So we want to stretch our hands and pray for you. And all I'd like you to do is just receive it into your spirit and believe. Saints of God, let's stretch our hands from all over the building and just pray, prophesy. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless.
Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.